let's get started. Dr. Mason is going to be introducing our panelists for the evening. Dr. Mark Mason is the medical director and president of South Lake Plastic Surgery and Med Spa, and he's been in practice here in South Lake for over 20 years. Dr. Mason, take it away. Hello, everybody. Thanks for spending your valuable time with us this evening. Hopefully, you're going to learn a lot about bioidentical hormones and what we offer at South Lake Plastic Surgery and South Lake Plastic Surgery Med Spa. We offer the BioT system, which is, as far as I know, the best on the market and the most extensively researched. So I think you'll enjoy what you learned tonight. Let me introduce everyone that's going to be helping you through this. Amy Sanders is our nurse practitioner, and she's in charge of the hormone replacement program. Also, we have Ashley Crocker, who's a licensed medical esthetician and laser technician and a certified diva provider. Last but not least, Sonia Corbin who many of you know is a licensed medical esthetician, a laser technician, and also a certified diva provider. So I'll let you guys take it away. Thanks again for joining us. So I'm going to kind of start by overviewing what symptoms you might be experiencing that would bring you in to get a wellness panel drawn. So as we age, after the age of 30, actually all of our hormones are going to drop off naturally, and that can be compounded further by um, any comorbidities, actually head injuries back in your childhood years, either from football or motor vehicle accidents can further drop that as well, as well as sleep apnea, which a lot of people suffer from for years and don't know. So there's a lot of things that compound that um, degradation of the hormones over time. So these are some of the big, <clears throat> that you can obviously read the list, but I'll go through the ones that patients usually bring up to me the most. So uh, fatigue is one of the biggest ones I hear about. Tension's another one. I'll have a lot of people come in and say they feel like there's an elephant sitting on their chest. And obviously my first question is, have you had a cardiac workup? And they have, and everything was fine, but they just have this feeling of tension consistently throughout the day. Um, sleep, whether it's trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, brain fog's a big one, your typical hot flashes and night sweats that we all know about, weight gain, especially in the midsection and bloat. Those are two big ones that come along with um, the hormone drop off. Um, and then migraines is another big one that I've actually seen that pellet therapy help. And libido is the other biggest one that has been brought up by my patients when they come in. So BioT, what they do is they make these pellets that go under the skin. So you don't have to remember to take a pill, a cream, or go in for a shot every week. Um, the only hormones that can be put into that micronized form are testosterone and estrogen. You still do have to take your thyroid and progesterone by mouth. They're not able to micronize it so that it releases under the skin. Uh, for, unfortunately, I wish they could because it's great not to have to think about taking that every day. So we'll start off with the men here. So you've probably heard of menopause, but I don't know if everyone's familiar with andropause, kind of the male version, the counterpart to uh, menopause for females. I always like the stat here, 20% of males over 50 have low testosterone. Uh, most males experience symptoms when they drop below 600. Going back to testosterone, men and women both need it. We experience symptoms when our amounts drop down. Um, obviously, in men, there's a way bigger swing when we do the pellet therapy for them versus women. One of the biggest questions I get is how soon will you feel the effects of the pellets? So for females, they say you can feel it as early as three days after the pellet insertion. And that's usually when I tell you to stop taking uh, your oral or your cream or your patch. For men, about a week, week and a half, because we're swinging them up usually a lot higher. I'm typically taking them from three, 400, and our goal is to get them to above 900. There's a screen coming up here that I love that actually shows you the benefit of having your testosterone over 900. So this is one of my favorite things that BioT puts out there for us to show patients. Um, as you can see, these numbers represent the total testosterone levels when I check it on a lab value. And each uh, number is actually correlated with a certain disease or chronic disease process. So at 231, we get a lot of patients that are experiencing ED, 283, depression and mood swings. In that three to 600 range, which is considered normal, but remember I said under 600 is when you get a lot of those symptoms. You can see that fatigue, libido loss. There's a, a higher chance of diabetes, coronary heart disease, all cause mortality at 600. So that's kind of our uh, cutoff point where if you're sitting under there, you're a candidate to get therapy. And then even getting you a little bit higher up here in the seven, 800 range, we're actually protecting you against um, metabolic syndrome, which includes 
hyperlipidemia, which is high cholesterol, um, insulin sensitivity, which increases your risk for type 2 diabetes. And then up there at 900, they've done a lot of studies on how it's protective for Alzheimer's disease. So this is one of my favorite graphs that kind of shows each level and why we really want to get men up above 900. So for both men and women, this kind of just shows what long-term effects it can have and then also what immediate symptom relief you will get. So we kind of went over it already, like you'll get relief from the brain fog, um, enhanced libido, enhanced energy, usually depression, anxiety, relief. Um, you might have like a little mood swing there at the beginning when we're swinging you up and then everybody is always saying how good they feel and how well they sleep. And then I'm gonna talk about a little later, more of the long-term effects with the breast, the prostate, and the brain, and the heart, and the bones. We'll get to that here in a minute. So menopause, don't really think I have to explain this one too much, but um, I do like to touch on how the symptoms can begin up to 15 years before you even are fully in it, that perimenopause area. It's terrific to get you started on hormone therapy in your 40s, because when we start to experience symptoms, that means that our body's crying out for that estrogen and testosterone. And I'll touch on it here in a minute, but it's really important to keep those levels up um, normally or even a little bit above physiologic levels because it protects the bones so much for women. So estrogen present in both men and women. It is important to men. We don't want to completely, you know, take that down. We watch it when we do testosterone therapy, but I don't like to block it in men unless it becomes a problem, which is very rare. But it is present in both of us. Um, really controls hot flashes and is very, very important in our bone density also plays a big role in that brain fog. Um, important here at the med spa, when I am actually replacing estrogen on women, they're actually maintaining that collagen so that their treatments go a little further. So those laser treatments that you've been doing, that sculpture you've been doing, maybe the Diva that we talk about here in a little bit, great if you can also have that estrogen in your system because that's maintaining your collagen, which is what we're stimulating with a lot of the laser treatments. So kind of touched on a lot of these already. I do like to actually point out because I have a lot of patients that are having me kind of check their cholesterol now because if you're not going to your PCP every year as you should be I'm happy to check your cholesterol once a year for you um, obviously I'll refer you back if I think you're someone that needs to get on some medication but a lot of times people are borderline they're doing the diet and the exercise and when we add the hormones on board they're able to exercise a little more with that increased energy because they're feeling better and I watch those cholesterol numbers drop and both testosterone and estrogen studies have been shown to help drop those numbers down. So I like to take a little time, this is a big thing that people ask me, the different methods, why pellets? And I'm a big believer in the pellets because um, here you can see the patches in the creams, 45% of people don't even absorb anything from it. And great if your insurance is covering these, most of the time it's not and you're paying hundreds of dollars for something you're not even absorbing. I can't tell you the amount of people that come in and I check their levels I like you to stop your cream and patch before you come in, but they don't. And I'm like, you know, let's just check it anyways. And they were getting no benefit. They look like someone that was on absolutely nothing that's come in. So hopefully that's not you. And if it sounds familiar, come in and get checked. I also like to touch on how creams and gels can transfer. So there used to be like a famous show, it was kind of similar to Dr. Oz. I can't think of the name right now, but they talk about how the small child was using the same bath towel as the dad and he started or as a girl, actually, she started getting these really dark, hairy patches on her arms because the testosterone gel that dad was using was rubbing off onto the child. And then there's also a story about a lady that was using it on her inner arm, and she would carry her dog, and the dog began to develop bald patches all over where her arm would touch the dog. So it does transfer, which is kind of not great. And then I like to touch on, you can see it's in caps down there, the estriol that's in the Bias product, which is one of the biggest um, estrogen creams, does not offer that bone, heart, and brain protection that we are gonna to touch on later in these studies. So when I talk about the studies, these were based off the pellet therapy. And then injections, not a huge believer in injections. I know they're still very popular. I like to always compare this to an insulin pump. So when a patient has diabetes, I think it's best for them to get an insulin pump if they can, especially type one who they're very dependent, they have to have that insulin. Because what it's doing is it's delivering a very steady dose throughout the day. So you're looking like a straight line, and there's a beautiful graph I'll show you here in a minute, that you're getting close to what your body would put out, a very level, stable amount instead of these roller coasters. And what a lot of my men say is, oh, I love when I get my shot and I get that energy like boost all of a sudden. And I'm like, but how bad do you feel when you're due for your next shot? Because you've completely bottomed out again. Our goal is to keep you up and let you stay there because you want to get that long-term benefit 
as well as that symptom relief. And you can also see um, with the shots, there's a lot of adverse effects on the cholesterol, liver, and heart disease. So it's that synthetic formula that has a lot of those side effects. Same with the synthetic oral options as well. Some of those had some bad effects with um, clotting. So bioidentical, what that means is it's derived from plants, but it's designed to break down exactly how our own hormones will break down in our body, unlike the old synthetics. And when we talk about synthetics, you may or may not know this, but they were sourced from um, pregnant horse urine is where they got those. So there's all kinds of side effects that come with that. It lasts longer than other treatments with the pellet therapy. It's four to six months that you're going to get out of that. That's four to six months where you don't have to remember to put on your patch every morning or go get your shot every week. We talked about the steady stream of hormones. Uh, one thing I like to touch on is at pellets have actually been out since the 1930s and 40s. They were widely used in Europe and Australia. And then when the synthetics came out in the 70s, the uh, big pharma really went into prompting those and really advertising those. And that's kind of how those overcame pellet therapy here. They just became a lot more popular. They were being marketed more. So there's actually treatment studies going back to the 1940s. That's the way we have so much data on these. This is the graph I was talking about. So it gives you kind of an overview of the different types. So with the oral, you get that spike in the morning and it starts to taper off. With the patch throughout the week, you start to get that taper off at the end. The shots are pretty um, similar to the oral where you get the spike. Uh, actually, more similar to the patch where it lasts you throughout the week and then you really get a drop with those. But the implant, it's given us that nice steady stream, just kind of like that diabetes insulin pump I was talking about. So this is a little bit more about the hundreds of studies. There's been 75 years of experience with it, used in five continents. I was like that little tip there. No roller coaster effect. We talked about that a little bit. Um, I want to talk about how it's implanted. So people get really nervous about how you actually put it in. So you'll be able to drive yourself home. I get that question a lot. It's actually just local anesthetic with lidocaine. Almost like when you go to the dermatologist and they want to take something off, just a little local. The whole procedure for a female takes five minutes. Males, you're getting a few more pellets. It takes about 10. So pretty quick and easy, actually. And you only have to see me a few times a year. So in a minute here, we're going to talk about how it's the best method um, hormone-wise and bone building medication-wise to build bone density. There's a lot of studies on the breast cancer risk, and they show testosterone is actually protective of the breast. We're going to go into a study on that in a little bit here. With the blood clots, heart attack, and stroke, that's really related to the shots and the oral synthetics. Actually putting the pellet under the skin bypasses that first pass metabolism in pharmacology where it's not going through the liver and affecting any of the um, clotting factors. Amy, you mentioned that uh, men don't have to come in as often to see you, and then women probably do. So could you explain um, what your, the average number of times that a woman would need to come in versus how many the average number of times a man would have to come in? So with females, your pellet's going to last you anywhere from three to five months. Typically, most of my females I'm seeing every three or every four months. So that's three or four times a year. With the males, they get a lot more pellets at once because we're doing that bigger swing, upswing, typically getting them from 300 up above 900, sometimes even into the thousands, which is excellent when they respond like that. Um, that's going to last them five to six months. So they're only seeing me twice a year versus if you do the shots, I mean, I know a lot of them do every other week, but technically they're designed to be weekly, which is pretty hard to do, especially with COVID. I'm sure everybody's schedules were completely off with that. Is the pellet dosing based on your weight or how is it based? I'll kind of go over the whole wellness exam here after we go through the long-term effects, but you're going to have a full lab panel. We're going to look at your symptoms. We're going to look at your lab levels. I'm going to look at your weight and your activity level. Because what happens is when you implant them under the skin, they break down according to your activity. So your bloodstream is going to form little capillaries around them as they implant for the first few days. And then the more active you are, the more it breaks down, just how your body would use your hormones. When you're more active, you require more. When you're less active, you require less. So this is the big thing that I like to harp on, and it's one of my favorite stats on the pellet therapy that really opened my eyes to this therapy being more beneficial than any other. So testosterone is a bone builder, as is estrogen, obviously, we all know that, but testosterone plays a big role too. And there's a ton of studies that they put together um, I actually have a big folder of them that I'll go through every once in a while and just pull out the best ones to show a patient that you actually get 8.3% per 
per year of bone density building with pellet therapy. Now you do get some with the patches you can see there and a little bit with the oral as well, but 8.3%, that's better than some of those bone building drugs. And with a lot of those bone building drugs for osteoporosis, you have a five year max because they start to come with their own side effect profile. So that's one of the best things I have ever seen for bone density and osteoporosis is pretty widespread with females in North America. So one of my favorite things to show patients it's about how beneficial, I mean, you know, you're getting your hot, hot flash relief, but you're also getting this bone protection for the next several decades. Brain health, they've done a lot of studies on how it protects against Alzheimer's disease. Um, and they've done a lot of linking it to causation with estrogen drop and testosterone drop. I mean, it makes sense. It helps your brain fog and it helps your memory loss. So it would make sense. It's protective of those synapses in the brain and preventative for Alzheimer's disease. Heart health, there's been a ton of studies on this, mostly based around because they link the shots to an upregulation in clots. And for women, uh, the oral synthetic estrogen was linked to some blood clots. So there's a lot of hormone studies. And so they started studying the bioidentical. And that's when they found out that there's all these decreases in cholesterol. And if you've had your cholesterol panel done, which most of you have, I always go over three things with you, your total, your LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, your HDL, which is your healthy cholesterol, and your triglycerides. And most people struggle with the total and the LDL. The only med on the market that really is effective for that is a statin, which comes with lovely side effects if some of you have already experienced them. Um, we got to check your liver enzymes. We've got to make sure you're not getting the muscle cramp and muscle wasting. So if there's something out there that can, one, help you feel better, protect your bones, protect your brain, and drop your cholesterol, I mean, those are three big hits right there for me. So I always like to tell patients that I like to get a baseline cholesterol before you start just to see where you're at and then watch it. And after a year, we'll check it again. And most of the time you do see a drop. And I'm sure having your hormones balanced and being able to exercise and lose weight obviously plays a role, but some of my people don't even have a weight change and they'll get this drop in their cholesterol. So breast health, I like to touch on this. Now, most of you who are my current patients, if you're watching, you know, I'm a big stickler for you having your yearly mammogram if you're getting estrogen. Um, I do want to always keep in mind your family history. I'm pretty conservative with my estrogen, given a really strong family history of cancer. So I'm always looking for that mammogram and I'm keeping you honest and making sure you have it every year. I'm sure y'all love me for it. Um, but there are some really, really cool studies coming out of the East Coast. Um, Dr. Glazier, she's a big proponent of studies with the BioT pellets. And she puts out um, a lot of research on why we do run women a little higher with their testosterone, higher than physiologic. And it has to do a lot with that bone building and a lot of those long-term benefits. But she's also doing one where she has been putting testosterone pellets around breast cancers that have been unresponsive to treatment. And it's actually shrinking tumors. It's pretty neat stuff coming down the pipeline. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing any of that here, but I always like to tell patients that it's something under investigation, and it's how they're showing that testosterone, not estrogen, testosterone can be very breast protective. So kind of snapshot of if you come in, any of this sounds familiar, you're interested, you're thinking about doing it, and you're like, how, how much is this going to take? How many times do I have to see you? So you'll come in, you'll fill out a checklist and a kind of in-depth hormone history for me. I'll make sure you're a proper candidate before we even draw labs. And we'll look at um, a whole slew of labs. We'll look for any anemia on your CBC. We'll do a metabolic panel, make sure your kidneys and your liver are looking fine. Um, I'll do an in-depth thyroid panel, not just your TSH. We're looking at your antibodies, your T3, your T4. We'll do the sex hormones, the testosterone, the estrogen, the FSH, progesterone as well. Um, and then we'll also do a lipid panel if you want it. You do have to fast for that. And we'll talk about that when you schedule. And also vitamin D and vitamin B12. So it's a pretty in-depth panel. We do do them in office. I draw them myself. Or you can bring me in labs from your PCP or your OBGYN if it's been within the last three months. And we'll work with you. It's um, a pretty affordable payment like plan for our labs. We've gotten a really good deal with LabCorp. But some people do put it on their HSA with their insurance as well. So I'll try and take labs from here and there if you've had them recently and then fill in any gaps and draw what I need. So if you have any symptoms on the symptom checklist, you're a candidate to get the blood work. After that, when I get the results back, we'll make sure the levels are um, appropriate for pellet therapy. We may start some vitamin B. We may start some vitamin D. Some people never knew they had a thyroid problem until I checked it. 
Um, some people didn't know they had iron deficiency anemia. So we'll look at the whole picture here, not just the sex hormones. And one thing to note is that we do oh, HSA cards. Um, if you want to use your HSA here in the office, we can run that as well. And that's, that's a plan between you and your HSA program. So we will take them. Yeah, and I have a lot of people that also come in and just want to get off, they hear about it, they want to get off their pill because they keep forgetting it, or their cream, they're still having a horrible, horrible hot flashes, and they're paying $300 for a cream, and they just want to get everything checked. So if you're one of those, do call me before you schedule, and I'll tell you when to stop the cream and how long out to schedule the lab work. And Amy, we have a question um, about average costs for, um, if you can give us the average cost for males and females. For females, we do a flat fee no matter what dosage you get and no matter what combination. And when I say combination, I mean you may only be a candidate for testosterone only because your ovaries are still functioning fine and I'll be able to see that on your lab work. Um, it's 350, so flat fee. And you're looking at that either three or four times a year. We'll figure out your schedule based on your activity level. And I have people that start on every four months and then they get more active and then they end up switching to every three months. So that's something we kind of Play, well, play along with as we go and it can change, but three to four months is typical, every three to four months. And then for males, I have some six monthers, so twice a year, and then I have a few that do every five that are real active. It's always 725 flat fee because they can get anywhere from eight to 12 pellets. I just saw a question, I'm gonna answer it before I pass it off to Ashley here to talk about the diva. Um, it was asking where the pellets are put in. So yeah, I didn't go over that, you, uh, you're keeping me honest. So you actually, for females, we tend to carry more of our weight a little bit lower on the body. So I always put them in, it's in the hip glute buttock area. So it's going to sit under your underwear line so no one can see it, but not so low that you're going to be sitting on it pretty much right in the middle between um, that gluteal crest and your hip there. And most patients don't even notice it. If they do, they only notice it for the first week. And when they start to break down, they can't feel it anymore. Um, my males, I do have another spot I can do on them because a lot of my males carry more weight in the midsection and they've got little skinny bird legs sometimes. And so I'll put it in the flank. So as long as you're not a golfer and you're not doing a lot of that midsection twisting, if you're a big runner, that's a good option for a lot of my males. I'll put it in the, the flank on the back where they might hold a little more weight because it goes in a little easier in the area where you have a little more fat. You can do an abdominal on the front, an abdominal insertion site, but that's not my favorite. People don't seem to like that because their clothes irritate it more. So pretty much sticking with the gluteal area and the flank. Sonia, I'm going to pass it off to you. Can everyone see the Diva PowerPoint? Amy, can we answer one more question before Sonia starts? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, because this is common, I think, in a lot of women um, our age, my age. Um, are joint aches a symptom of a hormone imbalance? When our testosterone starts to drop off after... 30, we notice we have less oil in the skin and less oil in the joints. So I like to kind of touch on this for my patients that think it might be a fix-all for arthritis. If you have bone on bone, you're still going to have pain. But if you're just starting to have, you know, that beginning aches and pains, a lot of times it's just a lubrication issue. And that testosterone, most of my patients will notice within the first two weeks, actually, that their skin's not as dry and their joints feel a little bit better in the morning. All right, Sonia, take it away. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all having a great night. I'm going to talk just a little bit about the Diva, and then I'm going to pass it on to Ashley, our other uh, medical esthetician and certified laser tech. First of all, I'd just like to mention, we always worry about skin health, body health, that type of thing, but we should also think about our vaginal health. Um, I think sometimes we don't really realize how important that is also. Um, our, the lining of the vagina starts thinning out, that type of thing. Of course, the BioT can help with that, but also the Diva is a great treatment for that. And I can attest to that because I've had the treatments and I can tell you it helped me in every way. And I'll explain those ways as we go along. But the Diva um, is a very simple, easy treatment. Uh, of course, we would do a history on your medical history, and Amy would be involved in that, our nurse practitioner, uh, and we go over all of that with you just to make sure you're a good candidate. Um, we also would have to have a pap smear within the last year, and as long as you bring that in, we can go over all of that, and we can get you started right away. 
So Diva addresses the following symptoms, which result from aging, menopause, and or childbirth. So you can be anywhere from the age of in your 30s all the way up to, I believe, 80 um, as far as this goes, because it addresses several different things, one of them being bladder leakage. So after we've had children, um, we can have issues with that, of course. And that can be like as when you cough, sneeze, exercise, laugh, you might have that leakage and you can see some other things on there also. And another thing it addresses is vaginal laxity. Um, And that goes along with after we've had children and as we age, we have the vaginal atrophy um, and just our bodies getting older, that type of thing. So why not keep our vaginal health, vagina healthy, just like everything else. So vaginal laxity is like loss of sensation, looseness, decreased sexual function, stretching and thinning of the vaginal wall, and loss of support to the surrounding organs. And then last of all is loss of lubrication. And that's discomfort during sex. I hear a lot of women talking about that when they come in for a consult with us. Um, The dryness that you have, increased frequency of infections. So whether it be a more yeast infections, that type of thing, um, the lining thinning out, even some bleeding at times, and then also itchiness. So this, the diva actually covers all of that. And as I said, I've had the treatment, so I really can't attest to these things and how much it can help a person. What is diva vaginal therapy? It's a three to five minute treatment time, depending on how many passes that we take through the vaginal wall. Um, It requires no downtime. There's no surgery or really anesthesia. We do have a topical numbing cream that we would use on you. Um, It's very safe. It's a comfortable laser procedure and it's customized to your needs. So if you don't have any leakage issues, of course, we don't need to do that particular part of the treatment. So that's where where it comes in about with the consult, what we would um, talk to you about and see what your specific needs are. The technology of the Diva, it's actually like our halo resurfacing laser for the face, but this is actually working in the vaginal wall. It uses two lasers to treat the vaginal tissue at the same time. And each laser works in different parts of the vaginal canal. The first, laser, which is called the Erbium YAG, it treats the superficial vaginal tissue. It heats it up to resurface the the shallow tissue, excuse me, causing thermal response. So the thermal response will repair the tissue by regenerating the brand new healthy tissue. And within the healthy tissue are glycogen cells. So the benefits of laser one, it's new healthy vaginal tissue, new tissue plus glycogen cells, increased lubrication, which is very important, pH balance, decreased frequency of infections, which is another thing that a lot of women are getting as they age, increased sensation, increased sexual function, and increased confidence. And um, Sonia, uh, on that pic, they have a picture of those women showing that they're survivors. And can you touch just a little bit about why they're referring to those breast cancer survivors? And why would they be featured um, for this procedure? Well, because as a survivor of breast cancer, you can, the estrogen, you can't have the estrogen that you would normally get. So therefore, you, but this treatment you can have. So you can't go through the hormones and Amy can probably answer questions about that as well. Uh, but this treatment obviously involves, does not involve that. So you can have this treatment with no problems at all. And there are a lot of uh, breast survivors that we see also. Uh, laser number two, the diode, it treats the deeper vaginal tissue, which is very important also. So it coagulates the deep tissue. So with that, with that, it stimulates new collagen rebuilding the wall inside. And the benefits of the laser too, as we just talked about, increased fullness of tissue, decreased laxity of tissue, thickening of the vaginal wall, which is very important because it does thin out quite a bit as we're aging. And it helps to support the control of the bladder and urethra. So with all of this, it increases confidence. And along with this treatment, I just want to mention that you get, there's also another part of the treatment called the Diva Tight, very simple treatment, and it treats the labia. 
So you've heard of labiaplasty probably, which is a surgery, a type of surgery that you can do. This actually is a skin type procedure that we do in this area where your labia is, and it helps to tighten it. Uh, and strengthen it. So a lot of women like to add that on to their to their diva treatment. Doesn't take but about five minutes more. Very easy treatment. None of this procedure, including the diva, you're in any pain. It's it actually just uh, works very well, and it doesn't take very long. We actually numb you, and then you're you're good to go in just a little bit of time. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Ashley, our other medical esthetician, so that she may talk about the rest of the treatment. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. So when we do the DIVA treatment, you'll come in and um, we will numb you with a 23% um, lidocaine, 7% tetracaine to help with the discomfort. Um, and we'll numb you for about 30 minutes. The actual treatment only takes up to three to five minutes, depending on how many um, passes we do. And um, what determines how many passes we do is depending on um, your symptoms. They recommend three procedures, four mm -hmm. to six weeks apart, and the maintenance um, just varies between patients to patient. Um, I've had patients say, well, my husband says it's time again, so I guess they, they know when it's time for you to come in for another treatment. This is the actual treatment and what it's doing inside the vaginal um, walls. And the nice thing about this, I just wanted to share with you, early on we had a machine called, the, it was a radio frequency, an RF machine, and there are many vaginal treatments that actually use, still use that RF technology. It is outdated technology. And in the former machine that we used to own, and they were trying to get us to buy it for vaginal treatments, it took 45 minutes and you had to manually rotate the handpiece. So the lovely thing about the Diva is, as you can see, Ashley and Sonia are basically just holding that handpiece in place and it self rotates out. So your treatment's always consistent, no matter who, who's treating you, and it's always going to be um, firing at the same level to all the tissue in your vagina, which is very important because that's what gives you the complete treatment. So what to expect after the diva treatment? Um, the downtime is minimal. You can return to work, your normal routine. The only thing that um, you should ref refrain from is sitting in a bathtub, having um, sexual intercourse, within uh, 48 hours and you may experience um, a little bit of pink discharge, spotting and mild cramping that you can take um, Tylenol or um, Aleve to help with the discomfort. Um, we had a question, Ashley saying, should I expect discomfort after the procedure? So what can you explain what the discomfort might feel like? Um, cramping, well, once the numbness wears off, it'll feel kind of um, warm, but very, it's, it's, not, it's not painful at all. The other question, a follow-up to that is, is there any trouble urinating? Absolutely not. Amy, there was a question about the liver enzymes, so this has to do with the hormones. Um, if your liver enzymes are already a little bit high, does it exclude you necessarily from pellet therapy? I'd have to see how high, because sometimes people's a ALT and AST, I've seen this actually a lot, because um, unless you're getting the cholesterol panel with me, some of my labs don't require you to fast, and I had, I actually had several patients come from lunch where they had a margarita, and it's slightly elevated. I'm looking for that upper range on the lab, like four or five times the upper mean. So I'd have to see the levels. Um, I do have some patients sometimes that have this or that, where I just get a clearance letter. Same with the Diva. We've had some patients have, I like to get your pap smear. Here's Amy keeping you honest again. I like to see if you've had any irregular paps or anything like that. And if you do, I typically just ask for a clearance letter. So if you know your liver enzymes are high enough to warrant you seeing like a hematologist or GI, then I'd probably just get a clearance letter from them if it's that high. If it's just a slight elevation and you haven't seen anybody, it was likely just something they're watching. For if you're a breast cancer survivor, obviously you don't want, want to treat them with pellets. So what is really the benefit of getting a DIVA treatment? So I like to do touch on this. I personally do not treat um, breast cancer survivors with testosterone here. There are some practices that will that put you on an estrogen blocker. 
because some testosterone does convert to estrogen a little bit. That's why we watch those levels in men as well. Um, I am family practice background, also dermatology. I just don't have a lot of experience with the blockers. So I usually refer you out to someone if you're that patient that is just dying to get started on hormones. I have a lot of patients that maybe their only symptom was vaginal dryness and they weren't allowed to be on estrogen because of surviving breast cancer or maybe a very, very strong family history where they want to avoid estrogen. I have actually had several of those patients as well. Diva is fantastic for that. If that is your biggest symptom, your biggest complaint, uh, you can barely sit on a plane or be with your partner. Go get, go get a diva. It's three minutes. It's actually shorter than probably your pap smear that I require you to bring in. <laughs> so it's actually better than that. Three treatments, four weeks apart, fantastic results. I mean, I have some patients on pellets that add that therapy on just to get that extra boost because I got rid of their hot flashes, but they're still having that dryness even on estrogen therapy. They play very nicely together. You got that collagen um, protection with the estrogen. So when the laser is stimulating it, you're getting a great result. But even without that estrogen on board, it's still a fantastic treatment. Mm -hmm.